Hey, it's Dr. Rowe here, hope you're well. Apologies about the noise. The builders are on site here and I'm just trying to do a quick video for you. See if I can set it up there. Um, okay, so I'm just about to head down to the solicitors to do some refinancing on a couple of my properties that are owned through a limited company. I just want to tackle this subject with you briefly and you will need to take some advice on this personally. I'm going to try and find the, a place to lock the camera so it's not shaking there. That's better. Okay, so apologies about all the light in the background. Yeah, so if you're doing refinancing at the moment, there's a lot of changes been happening just with the way the banks operate and the information they require from you. Uh, owning a property in your own name has very different tax implications to owning a property in a limited company and I'm not here to give you advice on that and you actually need to go and speak to an accountant tax specialist to give you some specific advice on that. Uh, but there are tax benefits to owning a property in a limited company. Again, you will need to speak to a, an accountant about that to get advice on it. So if you own properties in your own name and you're doing a refinance, the process is actually a lot simpler at the moment in terms of the paperwork, the signing of the paperwork, the witness of the paperwork, signing of the mortgage deeds, etc. That That is relatively straightforward, assuming that you're working with a really good broker. With a limited company, on the other hand, it is um, a more drawn out process. So for example, I'm just going at the moment to my solicitor and what I'm having to take with me is the uh, the mortgage guarantee, the mortgage deed. I've also got some paperwork there that I have to take with me, which includes not just the mortgage offer, but there's also um, board meetings um, for the directors of the company, all who are actually confirming that we are happy to do, and this is, uh, whether you're a, you are the director of the company or whether there's several directors in the company, ultimately the board meeting has to say that we as the directors were happy to uh, go for a refinance with this lender. So you normally have to state the lender, the amount of money that the lender is lending you and uh, the address of the property and then the minutes have to have a date on them and it's just confirmation that you are a sound mind and that you've all made that decision together. And they have to be kept as a record and actually you'll need to take that with you to show the solicitor as well. So, it, it, whereas in the old days it was a lot quicker, and that's not to say it isn't quicker, it's still relatively quick uh, compared to say somebody getting a mortgage uh, and refund uh, in their own name. If you're going for a mortgage in your own name, it's a lot slower process, I personally feel, than going from a refinance or a mortgage in a buy-to-let or a HMO, for example. Uh, so it's not as though you're just rocking up now to a solicitor with a single piece of paper. He's also got to witness me uh, sign off on all the guarantee paperwork as well. So that means that I'm going to be paying additional lawyer fees that I wouldn't have to pay on the refinancing of any properties that I've got in my own name. And I do still have certain properties in my portfolio that are in my own name. But equally, any properties that are in, my, uh, in a company name and I'm doing a refinance, what then happens is that I take that to the solicitor, I sit down with him or her, I present them with the deed, the mortgage deed, I, with the mortgage offer with a mortgage guarantee or the personal and on excuse me I keep getting a phone call coming in and on top of all of that um, any other paperwork I need to take with me and then there's a fee attached to that now it won't be a very quick you know 50 100 pound fee it could be a lot more than that it could be two three hundred pounds or more depending on the solicitor you're using the scale of the project the size of the uh, the mortgage and the the complexity of the deal as well so again be mindful of all these things because for a lot of people when they're doing refinancing they don't take these costs into account and it is important to allow for that as well so sometimes if you look at a remortgage the amount that you're pulling out has to be enough to justify going through all that process and also of course it needs to be enough to allow you to reduce your return uh, your, your money in the deal so it increases your return on investment and these are numbers I can do with you on a separate occasion I might get a flip chart up actually here and just do some stuff on the wall to show you how I would sort of typically do that so Again, if you've not done a refinance on a limited company and you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go in, buy the property in a, in a limited company, do a quick refinance and off I go, just be aware that it isn't as quick as it would be if it was in your own name. 
and it's not as quick as it would have been in the old days. There is that longer process, and you've got to find an independent lawyer to do this for you. So you're going to need to find yourself a solicitor that you know, that knows you, that you've got a relationship with. If you haven't got a relationship with them and they don't know you, they're going to have to get proof of who you are. Uh, you're going to have to bring your passport with you, proof of address. All those things are very common, but if you're brand new to the solicitor, they don't know you're going to have to go through that process with you. Now, the more refinances you do with a solicitor, the easier it's going to be because they know you, they've sat down with you before, they know that you're familiar with it, so they'll be able to go through it in a smoother way. Not necessarily quicker, but certainly in a smoother way. And ultimately, you're signing on the dotted line. Once that paperwork's done, one or two things can happen. One is they will photocopy it and send it off um, because remember, what I've got here is I've got one solicitor doing the refinancing. I've then got an independent solicitor I'm going to that I have to go through independent advice with my guarantee to say, yes, I understand that, I understand the risk, etc. So I've got two sets of legal fees. I've got the refinancing fees, and then I've got the separate fees where I'm going through the witnessing and uh, all of that paperwork as well. So it's not just the refinancing legal fees. It's a separate set of fees that you're going to have to have. And again, I just want you to be aware of this. And if you haven't set this up, and you're thinking, great, I'm going to get this over the line, and you're re financing lawyer says to you, okay, you need to go and find an independent lawyer. And you go, well, where do I find one? I haven't got one nearby. Then it might be a bit of a journey to do that. Some solicitors will do it over FaceTime with you if they're familiar with you and they've got all the paper. I'll finish off here because I've got somebody still trying to call me. Hopefully that's useful. Uh, it's really the main message here was to make sure that you're aware that it isn't as quick a process as you might think as, as if you're doing it in your own name. And if you plan for it, it will be efficient, but just be mindful there's more paperwork, it's more complex in a limited company, it would be just in your own name. Stop throw signing out, I've got to get off and I've got to pick up this phone call and I've got to go to the solicitors.